Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Digging Deep. Um, we're back in the small engine shop today and we got something a little different here for you guys. Um, we got a 120cc or 123cc uh, Troy built four stroke uh, push behind snow blower. Uh, it's a newer one, I'm not sure how new, but it does have the four stroke engine. So obviously you know it's a little newer because most of these um, that I've ever seen Correct me if I'm wrong, I think I had the little two strokes on them. But anyhow, um, the problem we got with this machine is uh, we have a surging engine and I pulled the carb, cleaned it, slammed it back on. And if you have that problem, there's a trick of the trade when you want in and clean your low speed jet and circuit. And everything looks good in the carb, you can rebuild it um, and put all new gaskets and everything in it and it'll still happen. So. We're going to do uh, a little trick of the trade, just try to drill out that pilot bit, just go up just a little bit in size, and that should fix our problem, guys. So let's dive on in here. All right, guys, I got that fuel line clamped off off camera here. That shroud should just slide off there, and the only thing you got to really watch uh, for is the little choke lever here like I say I had this off um, cleaned it and put it back on and the carb everything looked really good in the carb very very low hour machine right here so uh so like taking these and I use a little elbow to push me down there it works pretty well I love these uh these pliers I use them I use these needle nose pliers all the time all right we're gonna get that fuel line out of the way now what's holding me up here the primer side there it comes like i say just watch out for your lever here and that'll all come off and we'll set that to the side i'm gonna get in here take this gasket it's almost more like a spacer slash gasket there Remember that goes on, lines up with that hole right there. Now we can pop off this primer side. Set that off to the side. And uh, just watch you don't fling gas in your eyeball like I almost just did. All right, this carp should be about ready. We gotta get the throttle linkage off here. Let me set this over here. And usually, just get in there and usually sliding the carb out a little bit will uh, help you access this right in between there so you got to get kind of right in between there and out of that notch there I don't know how well you can see it I'm in front of the light here but yeah you want to just kind of make sure it comes out of that slot and comes up there and then these guys come off really easy with your hand right there and out comes the carb don't ask me how to pronounce that brand carb uh, there's a look at the carburetor right here like i say everything's pretty fresh on this we're just going to leave that gasket there and we'll put just a light coat of grease on that upon putting it back together but let's get this uh, carb on the car bench all right guys hopefully you got a good view on the carb here Trying to up my game, guys, little by little here. And be careful with impacts if uh, you're new to them because uh, you can have a bad day real quick if uh, you get too carried away. Tearing apart's not so bad, it's just putting stuff out together. It's where you gotta be real cautious. All right, we're gonna drop this slide out of here. And a lot of time on older carbs, guys, um, if I, like, some I'll even go in there, and they probably could have been rebuilt, but to uh, save money for the customer, they're down with it, and to just get it up and going. Everybody, when, when I do lawn and garden stuff, always wants their, everything done last minute and during prime cut season from, from my experience already. Um, but um, anyhow, these, these little pins here, I like to polish them up too really good, especially if it's in a carb that's uh, that's got some age to it. Um, here's the needle and spring here. 
And if I go, you guys can see that. If I go under the light, it doesn't have like a groove in it. There's no ring. So that needle could be reused here. Everything looks pretty decent. Um, so here's a look at the carb. Hopefully you guys can get a good view at that. We got the bowl and everything, needle seat, um, all taken out and put off to the side. And we're, we're going to take this main jet out and just double check things. Uh, it ran, but it, it was starving for fuel. Uh, for sure. Quite come out of there. All right, guys. This jet's not in bad shape at all. And I can't spot a number on it. All right, guys. It looks like I might be reading um, a 63 on that main jet. And it's definitely not clogged or anything. It's looking pretty good. So, and here is a look at the top of the car. So everybody can get a look if they're trying to do this job themselves. All right. These all are designed a little different. I'm going to remove this little bolt here on top here. Looks like, gosh, yourself a special tool you can get in there as well. That just was barely threaded in there. And I want to say this is our low speed here. They're a lot different than uh, like ATVs and stuff like that. From, so I'm thinking this is what we're looking for, guys. And that's all that looks like right there. So you guys can get a good shot at that. I'm trying to stay out of my light, but I keep managing to stick my big old head right in the way. All right, guys. So this has a 32 on the top of it here. It's got like two orifices on the side. And there's, I think, uh, your low speed jet there. All right, guys. Just wanted to get you a little bit closer here. I wasn't sure how well I was picking that up. But right down in there is your uh, low speed circuit um, right here. And, you know, basically all this did was pop right out of there um, on some O-rings. Just put a little, little tight coat, uh, uh, small coat um, of grease on that when you put it back into. I like to anyway. Or oil, but I like to use just a thin coat of grease. And then here's what this looks like. Hopefully I'm picking this up here. Um, and that's just, uh, you know, to adjust your idle, um, you just, unlike most all carburetors, you just want to get to the point. It shouldn't have been sticking through much. You should get to the point when this is all the way closed up, you want to get to the point where you're just, just barely kissing into it, um, on that there. You don't want it in there too far, but you, um, I'll show you when I put it back together. You just want it to, to make contact and maybe take one turn, one full turn. It should get you, um, somewhere in the ballpark. Now, again, guys, I stress this every time I make a video. Um, there are service manuals for all these engines and stuff online. Most of them you get for free. That's how I find all of mine. Some I do have to buy. Um, some I do buy, like um, me working on the Yamaha Banshee over and over again. I get tired of pulling it up on my phone. So I just went ahead and ordered um, a hardback copy of the service manual. A lot of times I like having that. It's just, to me, it's easier to look in the actual service manual but anyway that's that's tips and tricks of what i what i do so um here is a real close look at the low speed jet and if that's completely clogged if that jet's completely clogged it shouldn't run um on these small engines it it it, it might but this one runs but it surges pretty bad and it kind of smooths out of, of, if i give it um if I choke it out a little bit and enrich and, and the fuel a little bit. But uh, like I say, I already cleaned everything out once, uh, went through everything. But um, what we're going to do here today is not just uh, clean this out. We're going to we're going to open it up just a little bit. 
um, to remove that search. Cause like I say, I've done been through this whole carburetor and that didn't work and it still did it. So, so we've got everything apart here and I am actually, I used on this one was, uh, my number 80, um, which is a uh, point zero one three five inches. It was the smallest bit, um, in this whole kit. So, um, what we're going to do, and, and if you set it down, like here's one I used not long ago. Now that I forget what I was using this one for. Um, it was definitely, uh, I think maybe an ATV or something, uh, just kind of, a um, doing something on the fly. I usually, you'll you usually always get the proper jets, uh, going that route. But anyhow, we're going to go right in this orifice here, um, with this drill bit. And I like to just let, let me make sure we're recording. Yeah. I just, I let the, uh, jet itself kind of do the work. This thing is so flimsy, but, uh, and basically I'm hoping that I don't go too far with this. I don't think it's going to, because it seemed to be pretty close to the hole that was already there. And usually you find the bit that matches that hole perfectly. And then you're just going to go the next, you just take the next, uh, drill bit size up. If we're getting in there. And you'll see it come out of the little orifice here. You'll kind of see it, uh, the bit come through there. Um, then you know you've went the whole way through the low speed jet. And we got through, guys. Yep, we're through. This should fix our problem. Um, just a little trick of the trade with these small engine carbs. These are like other car. I don't. I haven't worked on that brand. I'm not even going to try to butcher that one up, but I've worked on similar carbs. It's a common carburetor right here. So that's, that's that. And we're going to uh, blow that out good with an air compressor. I'm going to do that off camera because it's going to be extremely loud. And uh, I'm going to blow this out real quick, hit it with some uh, uh, brake cleaner um, and uh, make sure we uh, clean out all the circuits and everything uh, in the carburetor itself and, and the main on the main circuit side and uh, start giving er uh, everything put back together here. So I'm gonna reassemble everything here in our tiny drill bit. I'm just gonna, I literally set that thing down on here and lost it. And I thought, man, it must've stuck to something and fell off. It's that small of a drill bit guys. Put back in there and we're just going to uh, bring it through um, until, let me just use a screwdriver, it's probably small enough, isn't it? Until you get like uh, what we almost had there was like a decent little nub. So at about that point we're making contact and maybe from there we'll, we'll do a full turn. And again, some of this stuff might already be in the service manual. I apologize. Some of that footage was a, a little low. Um, <laughs> I, I adjusted it. So we should have a better view now, guys. Work in progress, guys. Um, so where I left off was saying, you know, basically, you, you just want to um, make contact uh, to the throttle of, uh, level lever here, excuse me. And then usually about a turn to maybe two turns should somewhere get you in the ballpark. And that's with almost a lot of carbs somewhere within that spectrum. Um, you don't want to go way in and hold it open and you're going to start that thing up and it's going to be idling way high and you're going to be like flipping out. So that's a good reference. Make contact and go one to two turns. It usually works uh, pretty well for me guys. So um, as a lot of us probably already know, we have ethanol in all of our gas. And if you look closely, you can already see that this, this gas gets not in the best shape in the world. It'll still seal more than likely, but it's already getting hardened. And I've shown people before, like just on, on, um, fuel lines, uh, that I use for chainsaws, weed eaters, et cetera, that I've had ones that I put on engines and literally worked on them a month later, all new fuel lines and everything. And they, they ran ethanol gas through it. And you should see the difference from just, uh, I guess, I think it was like two months in 
uh, from what that ethanol did to that fuel line just in two months uh, compared to a brand new line. So that just shows you uh, kind of what this ethanol can do to these gaskets and fuel lines and stuff. It just does not last near as long and it hardens everything. So especially in the real small stuff, guys, I would run non-ethanol fuel 100%. All right, so you basically want to check everything over good. Um, we got our main jet out. That's clear. And watch your eyes, guys. Wear safety glasses doing this. Um, I always like to find my port and turn it the other way because it will come straight back at you. Our needle, see all that. That, that, that was all really, really clean. I'm not even going to pull any of that out. So... Um, what I like to do now, and I've just cleaned up in here, so I'm kind of thrown off here. What I like to do now is get like a piece of scotch Bright pad and always take these. I probably, I'm just showing you guys, I think I probably, I do it to everyone I do. I probably did it the last time I had this apart and just polish these up guys. Cause last thing you want is, is to be doing all this work, rebuild a carb that's, uh, trashed up pretty good and put it all back together and then hear your pins just hanging up on your float causing issues and you're still like i don't know just getting upset because you did everything you thought you were supposed to so take the time and do that and a lot of times you won't even be able to see i mean you can check it for how smooth uh it it, it uh goes the float goes back and forth but something i always like to do all right guys so we're going to take our needle, set it in there, and pull that spring down. Sorry, it's kind of hard to do this on camera. And that'll set in there just like that on this carburetor. And we're going to set this. Well, that's um, getting sidetracked, guys. Let's get our main jet back in there and <laughs> double check it. Um, that one looks pretty good. Take that main jet and put it back in here. Do not over tighten them. I'd rather have a main jet fall out than over tighten them and, and strip them out. Um, just kind of give them a bump. That's all you got to do. Tighten up. <clears throat> all right. So now we're going to take our, our uh, float. Stick that in there. And some of these pins go in one way on certain carbs and some don't. Some just push straight on through there. There's no uh, clips or anything on this. Some carbs will also have that. And you're just going to show that through as so. Hard to do this without the, getting my angles. I usually do doing it on camera. I do apologize. So that's all we got to do there. I'm not going to really worry about uh, Float height because all that was working pretty good. It, everything looks pretty good with that. Pretty simple in these carbs, guys. So easy a caveman could do it. <laughs> so double check everything. Jets in. All right. We didn't set anything anywhere. So we want to line up our fuel drain. And another thing up there, want my light. I'm, I'm walking over the cord. I apologize, guys. Another thing, angle that to where if you want to drain this carb down in the wintertime, well, this is a snowblower, so you use it in the wintertime. Um, whatever, when it's out of season, uh, take that out. Drain your carbs out, especially if you if you do run ethanol. Uh, drain your carbs out, and you'll thank yourself later um, and get and keep that ethanol out. Or what I do sometimes is just pinch, pinch the line if I don't have a valve. I'll, even sometimes I'll put valves on them for, for people uh, with this ethanol issue. Oh, well, you can shut and uh, run your carb dry and choke it out right at the end and try and get like every little bit of gas that you can get out of the carburetor to kind of winterize it. So it starts the following year, no problem. You can also use your fuel treatment and stuff like that. But uh, instead of worrying about that, that's the procedure I usually do. And uh, we're not going to hit this uh, with the impact guys because that's a bad idea all right guys we're ready to reassemble this carb and see if we uh diagnose the issue here
All right, guys, I'm over here getting a little bit of grease for my gasket there. And I always try to grease them when I put them back together. I think they seal better and they won't stick to your mating surfaces, guys. I just put a nice little thin coat. Now this one's actually stuck good on the other side. Um, I usually don't try, if it's doing that, I usually don't try to pop them off there at that point um, and, and split the gasket. Um, I got these gaskets um, on hand. I'm almost sure I got several of these gaskets, but this one, like I say, it's a low hour machine and it's still in pretty decent shape. So that'll, that'll seal up no problem at all. when you uh when you want to put these back on you want to uh, remember you have your linkage there to get on and usually it's about three quarter of the way there is where uh you'll want to kind of set them in if you're too far out or, or have the carb too close to the engine or the cylinder head itself is when you'll have issues and i'm sorry about the lighting guys I'm having a little bit of issues with my light here today. Let's see if we can get that light back on for you guys. All right, now we're just gonna get the smaller linkage line put on. Just kind of pull it, just like a little spring action. And stick her on there. That's all good to go. Make sure you got a good surface meet there. And uh, I could run it right here without the shroud and put these uh, these two nuts on um, it'd be running lean and just to see if it fixed the issue but I'm pretty confident that hopefully this solved the issue guys um, very simple very simple job uh, to do put that on there you have a little vacuum guys coming off to your uh, overhead valve cover uh, here so don't forget to kind of sneak that on there and then uh, your choke lever is going to sneak right through there just push your primer um, push your primer line out of the way for priming the gas we'll sneak that around after we start work this on and that line can be a little bit pain in the butt sometimes. It's so much harder doing this with camera because usually I'm jumping around getting different angles and everything. Uh, we'll get her, guys. And our line went on there. And we can't forget about that. We don't want that around full cord. That comes right up into the carb there. Gas feed. I'm going to take our two tens and put back on there. And all I'm going to do is hit this by hand, guys. Um, I'm sure there's a torque spec. There's a torque spec to everything. Um, again, refer to your service manual. This is just how I do it. You're, you, you do it by following the service manual. That's what I suggest. And at your own risk, guys. All right, let's tighten that down. With a 10 mil. I just like to always hold out on the end here and kind of just do them back and forth and don't get carried away with going one on one side too far. Just kind of jump back and forth. Just give it a bump until it kind of stops and then you know square all right guys so now we're ready to get this thing down and see if it uh fix the issue after we put our fuel line on here hopefully you guys can see everything bring our little clip back up all right guys make sure our float didn't stick or anything got about a half a tank of gas there it should be rather fresh gas 
Looks like everything should be all right there, guys. All right, let's get her down and see if this thing's gonna start up. Probably just gonna leave this right on the stand here. Get out there and fix things, guys. I mean, no matter what, uh, people are gonna try to fix things themselves. So, instead of bringing it to a guy like me, and if you're good with your hands, that's why I make these videos to help people out, guys. I'm going to probably try and start this thing right on my handy dandy lift here. We'll open this up here so we don't suffocate. And uh, try and get it started up. Guys. I can't stress how much I like this uh, this little Pittsburgh lift um, from Harbor Freight. Get my grease screwdriver out of the way. But guys, we're gonna get this thing started up and see if we fixed it. I'm not. E I've decided to not even pull it down um, off here. Let's pop it. Oh. There you go, my dudes. <laughs> no more surge, so that's all it takes. So, yeah, that's all it takes, right? Now we got a normal running uh, engine here that's not sounding like, what the heck is going on? Uh, you know, it's funny, um, you know, once you become a mechanic, you know, I see people run stuff sometimes, and I've heard, like, people running generators. And they do the same thing, like they're surging and stuff. It's like, dude, you need to, need to work on that thing. But there you have it, guys. That's, that's a quick and easy fix uh, for these things surging, um, especially if you get in there and decide you're going to pull the, um, the carb apart and uh, clean everything out. And then you scratch your head and you put it back together and wonder why it still does the same thing when everything was looks good. So um, I hope that helps anybody out. Um, uh, anybody have any questions or comments comment down below please do uh, give me a like and subscribe dude all right well thanks for watching digging deep until next time guys